Hello guys and girls and hello Nina. I really hope this video reaches you and if so I would love to hear your response. So this is a response to your recent interview with Jordan Owen. I really enjoyed it but I would like to comment on your expression that we should be teaching men not to rape. Now before I begin I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself and my philosophical background because that may influence how and indeed if you respond back. So, I'm an activist for men and boys, I care for true equality, but I focus mainly on the rights of males because my research shows that they are the ones who face the most problems both legally and socially today. Things like failure in the education system, suicide rates, incarceration rates, homicide victims, uh, workplace fatalities, homelessness, uh, receiving harsher sentences for the same crimes and genital mutilation, just to name a few. I'm also very much an anti-feminist. Whilst there are many true egalitarians, such as yourself, who take the label, though you did mention you're beginning to use humanist more and more these days instead, what we're seeing from the mainstream, the ones who are teaching in universities, influencing law and receiving taxpayers' money, they are almost exclusively radical man-hating victim feminists or condone the radicals' behaviour with their silence. Now, now, this brings me to sex-positive feminism. Uh, when it comes to things like abortion, promoting sex education, LGBT and sex workers' rights, and slut-shaming, etc., all of those issues I completely agree 100%. But that being said, I have two problems with the movement as a whole. Firstly, it takes a very narrow perspective and in many ways doesn't go far enough. For example, they uh, support abortion rights, but don't support a man's right to say, uh, I didn't consent to this child, so I'm not going to take uh, financial or parental responsibility. Um, I think it's pretty um, ridiculous that we don't as a society uh, support that. Uh, if women have complete 100% autonomy to say, I don't want a child, I'm not taking the, um, the financial responsibility, a man should have that right as well. They also acknowledge uh, slut shaming, which predominantly affects women, but not creep or virgin shaming, which predominantly affects men. Even when discussing the Swedish model, it's all about the women, barely, barely even a token acknowledgement that, hey, you know, men are being arrested for something which shouldn't even be a crime. The second main issue I have is uh, the trickle-down of uh, radical feminist ideas. I've seen leading sex-positive uh, leading sex positive feminists like Lacey Green uh, blogging about the Enliven Project, which underestimates false allegations by a factor of more than 50, and other equal, equally flawed studies. I've seen them parrot Marxist ideas, uh, like all men's problems are caused by classism and patriarchy. I've seen them downplay male rape, and most disturbingly for people who claim to fight for women's rights, lesbian rape is often treated like it doesn't exist. In short, the problem I see with the sex-positive uh, movement is the feminism. If the sex-positive movement wants to become the egalitarian movement it claims to be, I think it really needs to be able to distance itself from the feminist label. With, the, with that rather lengthy introduction out of the way then, let's get on to where I disagree with your interview. And again, Nina, I think you're rock, and I think you rock, so don't take any of this personally. She has showed any normal interest in sexuality, she falls off. She is raped, she's fallen off and can't get up. Mm -hmm. It's probably her fault. Yeah. Um, what did she wear? What was she saying? Where did she go? She was supposed to be so progressive still. Yeah. At its heart, blames women for male behavior. Right, right. You shouldn't have gone there. You shouldn't have dressed like that. You shouldn't have had that dream. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done this. It's like, how about telling, instead of telling women how, how to stay safe, how about we tell men not to rape? Right. How yeah. about we do that? Right. Well, how about we have a campaign instead of, you know, instead of, we tell women that rape's not your fault, but how about we have a campaign for young men that, you know, 
what rape is. And yeah. even if you don't, you know, if there's a really great, oh my God, I saw a great ad in England or Australia and it got a huge amount of pushback. So the picture um, is of a woman in a, uh, she's wearing a mini dress and high mm-hmm. heels and stockings and she's passed out on the couch. You can't see her face. She's passed out on the couch yeah. and a filled wine glass. So clearly, you know, she's drunk. And the tagline is, just because she doesn't say no doesn't mean it's not rape. Right, right. Okay, I've got quite a lot of a lot to uh, respond to there. Saying that we should teach men not to rape implies that rape is something men do to women rather than something people do to people. And this is a very unhelpful way of viewing the problem. Any gender can be the perpetrator and any gender can be the victim. The CDC 2010 Sexual Violence Survey puts women forcing men to have penetrative sex at 80% of the rate of men forcing women to have penetrative sex. Uh, Gay rape in in prisons outnumbers all male on female rape outside of prisons in the US, and a third of lesbians are sexually assaulted by other women in their lives, according to Curve magazine. Of course, there are many factors which make it hard to have truly accurate figures, uh, such as rate of false allegations, differing perceptions of events between demographics, and differing legal definitions. But this is all the more reason to view, um, to not view rape as a gendered issue. Rape is um, isn't merely something men do to women but something people do to people, which is a message which I'm going to keep repeating until people get it. Now, I don't actually have a problem with teach people not to rape. Um, I think that it's valid within a limited range. Um, It's certainly a good idea to teach what rape is, what constitutes uh, informed consent, and what doesn't. But it shouldn't be taught in a gendered manner, viewing all men and boys and only men and boys as potential rapists. As for the blaming the victim idea, uh, yes, I agree. Telling somebody who's been raped that they shouldn't have been dressed like a slut or shouldn't have gone back to somebody's place um, is completely wrong. But there seems to be this idea in the sex positive community that even giving somebody advice about how to avoid dangerous situations is, in and of itself, victim blaming. Now, I'm not saying what um, I'm not saying that this is something you do. I don't really know your stance on this, um, but I'm going to talk about this um, this issue anyway, and it would be interesting to hear a clarification on what your views are. In this respect, rape seems to be treated differently to any other crime. I know that if I walk through a bad part of town at midnight, I am more likely to get mugged. I know that if I go home with lots of women I hardly know, I'm more likely to get falsely accused. Um, Is knowing these risk uh, risk factors going to uh, stop me from doing these things? Uh, Absolutely not. But that's a risk assessment everybody must make for themselves. Does it make it my fault if I do these risky behaviours and become a victim? Does it make the guilty party any less responsible or mean they should face a lesser uh, lesser punishment? Of course not. Unless some, um, of course not. But unless somebody is actively controlling somebody's somebody else's behaviour or legitimately uh, blaming somebody if they become a victim, it's a good item. It's a good thing to give safety advice. Just like with the multi-billion dollar feminist-run domestic violence industry, uh, which ignores more effective strategies um, to prevent violence and keeps the violence going so they can stay in business, I suspect something similar is in effect here with the people at the top who push the victim-blaming idea to such ludicrous extremes. As for uh, these things being brought up in uh, rape trials, I often hear that mentioning the uh, defendant's sexual history, what they're wearing, and what they were drinking is victim blaming. And yes, in some cases, this may be genuinely what's going on. But in general, these things aren't mentioned to discern whether the defendant deserved it. They are brought up 
to help determine whether the, the defendant is making it up or whether there's a case of mistaken identity in the case of alcohol. I agree that somebody having sex with 10,000 other people doesn't mean that they necessarily consented to another person and doesn't mean they are any, less, um, any more likely to. But we're now at a stage in England where the defendant can't show evidence that the plaintiff has a history of sex um, false allegations or that the plaintiff made up an allegation to hide the fact they had an affair. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I think some young men don't, there are the psychopaths and sociopaths who don't care what the law says and they right. know it's wrong and they do it anyway. And then there's yeah. the guy who's like, uh, uh, yeah. um, and who does who does something that actually is rape that he might not understand at the time right. actually is rape. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as I said earlier, uh, for certain cases, teaching people um, what rape is and what consent is will potentially prevent them from going out and committing a crime. Uh, for those who uh, are simply uneducated, yeah, of course, uh, that's going to help. For the psychopaths, though, and those who just don't give a fuck, um, you know, telling them telling them not to rape isn't going to have the blind bit of difference, and you know, that's why we need other strategies as well. So there's not enough education um, going to young men mm -hmm. um, by other men. They, you know, it's it's. You know, you you got to use force or drugs, dude. Man, yeah. you're a fucking loser, um, or whatever. I don't know what men need to say to other men about stopping rape because I'm yeah. not a dude. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the cultural things would be meaningful. Yeah. I, as a non-rapist, am no more responsible for the behaviour of rapey Bob than you are, and nor is any other man solely based on their genitalia. And from my experience, men simply don't go around telling people that they rape somebody. I could make the argument that perhaps women need to be uh, women need to do more to teach men not to rape because after all most rapists come from fatherless homes but again uh, making this a gendered issue is not helpful if you want to argue that we as a society need to work together to prevent rape um, and that at the moment we're failing then uh, fantastic I support you 100% but what you've just advocated for was that women should be absolved of any responsibility in this issue, making this uh, not just the failure of rapists, but the failure of all men, uh, rather than the failure of society as a whole. Um, but, uh, you know, as a side thing, in, in a lot of Latin cultures, the prohibition against child rape is very, very strong. Even men who are macho men don't hurt children. Mm -hmm. And so you see these young Latina girls, you know, young meaning, you know, 13 to 16, yeah. being very, very sexualized and very, very dressed up and pretty, but they know that the look don't touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's a whole different... And, and, and if the guy touches, he's the one in the wrong. She's yeah. not the one. He's yeah. he the one that didn't act like an adult, and this is a very general, broad overview, mm -hmm. so anyone who is, a, who is a expert in Latin culture can castigate me later. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the change of scenery, I moved into my room because uh, people wanted to watch the TV, and I can't very well record a video while they're doing that. Uh, anyway, I'm certainly no expert on Latino culture, but how exactly did we get on to child molestation here? Uh, apart from an extreme minority, we already have a zero tolerance for child molestation, uh, especially when it comes to girls. And in prison culture, child molesters are considered the lowest of the low. The only case I know of where somebody has gotten away with the excuse the child seduced me in a court of law was a 14-year-old boy being taken advantage of by his friend's mother. Now, perhaps Latino people are less sexphobic than uh, people in people from other cultures, but I would really have to see some evidence that there's uh, less child molestation and that open sexuality is causally related to this. Anyway, uh, that's it from me for now. Um, and if I don't get a response, hopefully this has at least given you a few things to think about. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you again soon.
Bye for now.